Hey, this is Aggressive Inline, level 3 Industrial. I'm Insetic, and with me this episode is a special guest commentator, Beerda. Hey, what's going on, guys? Beerda played the Tony Hawk series much more recently than I have, and since this game has a lot of comparisons to that series, I brought him along, A, because I'm home for the weekend and he wants to do this with me, and B, so that maybe we could get some insight, have some discussion, or whatever. So, Aggressive Inline came out in 2002, which is between Tony Hawk 3 and 4, and so some of the stuff that is in here, you can, you know, definitely say that Aggressive Inline did it first, and, like, skitching, or not having a time limit, because I basically had to go off of what I remembered, but Beerda can talk about sort of when that was introduced uh, in the Tony Hawk series versus in this one. Yeah, in um, there there was a huge transition between three and four. In three, Tony you know, Hawk three and four. Yeah, Tony Hawk three and four. Um, in three, there were you know you did all the challenges in one run. You know you got two minutes to do the challenges, and if you didn't finish them, you had to try to get whatever ones you didn't finish on the next run and in four you were basically issued one challenge at a time where uh, this one i can i can kind of see where they kind of got the idea for that um maybe from this game Tony Hawk 4. well each level is kind of in aggressive in line each level is its own sort of open world that you can go around and talk to people and get challenges and some of them have to be done right as you get them like, you know, when you need to get 100,000 points in a minute. But, I mean, I mean, sure, you can fail that and come back to it later, but, you know, as soon as you talk to the guy, that's when the minute starts. But another thing is that the, the challenges, I've mentioned the challenges in Aggressive Inline, are sometimes sort of confusing, hard to find, hard to do, versus sort of the simpler challenges of the early Tony Hawk games, like collecting skate in each level that that is sort of the iconic tony hawk challenge you know find the floating letter letters and that's sort of sort of a simplistic and i don't really want to say like beauty in it but you could see the letters and you could see how to get to them and you have to like execute it which is the tough part rather than figuring out what to do like, this challenge I'm trying to do is get 45,000 points with three vaults. And vaulting is when you approach a, a waist-high object and you press circle button and you jump over it. And it, it's tough to do... Well, there's a whole lot of places to vault in this level, but there's not very many places where you can chain them together. So, the route I just did is the one I finally found after like two hours, and it still sort of involves me like glitching the level, because at the end I do the third vault off of like an ankle high surface. So, I mean, sure, there's a lot more in the levels, but that also means that it, it it's just tougher to know what to do, because usually they don't directly point something out. I mean, they give you a camera, you know, they give you a camera preview of what to do, but sometimes the camera pans out and shows you what to do, and you're like, I don't know where any of that is. You know, that's, prob that's probably higher up in the level than you've been, and you usually have to jump up to a rail and do a combination of rails. But, uh, yeah, Bearded, do you see kind of a difference in the level design between this and, like, the early Tony Hawks. Yeah, I noticed that in this one there are there's a lot more stuff. Like even in the later ones, the later Tony Hawk games, there's not as much stuff in the levels. Like there are a ton of rails and a ton of just ramps that you can go off of, and all the little details that you know make up the level. Um, it, they just don't exist as much in the Tony Hawk games, and I I think. You know, there there are advantages and disadvantages to having this much stuff in the levels. Um, you know, I mean, I'm I'm sure you could come up with, you know, all the advantages and disadvantages on your own. But um, one advantage I think is that you know you can there there's more freedom to come up with your own lines and combos. Um, 
you know and the disadvantages is you know you, you've got a bunch of stuff in your way when you want to just like you know go up a ramp to get to a higher place you might run into a rail or you might hit the wall or whatever I mean over on the left side of the level well, I don't really want to call it the left side but basically where you start in on the level there's a lot of rails next to each other and that's nice if you want to jump from one to the other and get a big grind but it's annoying if you're trying to get across the level and you've basically got to dodge all of these and even in the later Tony Hawks like I played through Underground 2 and Beardo you played through Proving Ground I think is that correct uh, I played I played up through Project 8 all right um I, I don't know when did Proving Ground come out uh, I think that was after I, I, I don't really remember but yeah, I remember even when they opened up the levels, they still had really obvious lines, like jump from here to here, or this would be good. Uh, and it, what Aggressive Inline does quite a lot is that they have these like 90 degree rail transfers. And I brought this up in the Civic Center video on how like actual developers from Insomniac mentioned that people had trouble following an, a 90 degree turn in the level and so that they they cut the angle down in pre in future games but you saw there to flip the switch you have to do like a mandatory jump from one rail to one that's going completely parallel and later on to get the uh hidden stat boost you have to do two of those and even earlier in this video when i was grinding the rail that held all the quarter pipes up that was jumping from one rail 90 degrees to another and if, if you get it, then it's going to work because 2002 game physics, but I, don't, I feel like it requires an extra amount of like figuring things out that might be uh, that might not be obvious for people who haven't played weeks and weeks of extreme sports games. So that that's just one of the the big things I notice across aggressive inline now this level is just not very good it is really cluttered and it has quite a bit of problems especially with this goal grinding the robot arms because these arms on the car assembly line keep changing their position and maybe they have a pattern but that's after like 10 or 12 different things they do and yeah often they arrange themselves so that one uh, arm goes to the next arm, so you can grind two of them in a row, which is nice. And then once you grind four, there's another challenge to grind the remaining two. So good luck on remembering exactly which four you grinded, especially because it probably wasn't like a straight line. You know, it might have been diagonal and such. And good luck waiting around if you choose to do this, if you choose to wait it out, hoping that your juice meter doesn't run down to zero. Now, I mean, you can you can go do tricks, get it back up and come back, and then fall off the walkway, but... Like I said, it's just waiting around. In an extreme sports game, you're waiting around. I, I, don't, I don't think those sh two should be in a sentence together. And I'm, I'm just, I, I know I sound a little more, I'm a little more infuriated than in the previous videos. But yeah, I don't exactly like this level. Aggressive Inline has some good levels. And now I figured out that the uh, robot arm furthest away is the one I need to grind. So I, I, like so, I like some of the levels in Aggressive Inline. But then this level is just really cluttered, doesn't give you very many room. You need to wait on things to happen. And it's it's got a bunch of confusing uh, places for things to be. Like the switch and all the other stuff you had to do basically at the top of the level where you couldn't see it from the ground. However, one thing that's nice is it does have this entire outdoor junkyard that you probably might not have noticed. Like, how many times did I go by that door trying to grind the robot arms? And it didn't open up because I wasn't right next to it. That's yeah, that's a rhetorical question, but no, I, I I like it. I, I like that they added this extra area 
to the um, to this level. It reminds me kind of of um, what like some of the Tony Hawk games. Um, like I think it was in two uh, where there's I think it's the first level in Hangar where you have the um, you have the main area and then there, you, there's a separate area. But then there's also an underground two, I believe, where you you're playing in the first level of the first game, but then they added on a second area, and I, I think this is this does that you know something like that, but it's already the original level. So. Yeah, I, I remember what you're talking about for Hangar. Uh, you're talking about like at the back of it. Once you do something, it opens up, and that's the area with the secret tape. I remember that uh, Hangar fun times. So I completely missed my chance to talk about that challenge, but I'm going to anyway. That challenge is sort of strange because it's the first time it adds something on to the level. Like, once you start that challenge for the uh, computer, it adds like this entire park editor area to the middle of the junkyard with a whole bunch of ramps and a whole bunch of rails that are, I think, intentionally cluttering it up. And what you can do is you can you start like operating a crane and you can move level pieces and destroy them. But if you do so, it adds to the amount of points you have to get. And so that's unique. That's different. That's nice. But there's that half pipe area that uh, that it gives you at the beginning that if you're good with reverting and then manually into that, into that you could just start the challenge and go and get 50,000 immediately. I mean, it's nice that it's not too tough to do. It's nice that it's not like really frustrating and it is nice that it's something different than anything before and then me getting the uh, special bonus stat was something I had to go record and add in later showing off that yeah there's a whole bunch of grind jumps that are that aren't like something right in front of you so that's been aggressive in line level 3 industrial kind of a short level so far Again, haven't unlocked the back half of it. Maybe the back half will be better than the front half, but... <sighs> Especially with how good the fourth level is, I'm trying to raise hopes now. I'm trying to raise hopes for this game. With how good the fourth level is, I can't wait to get through this one. And so that's been Insetic and Beerda, who I've... not Probably not given his fair share of talking, but... It, it was good cool. doing this with you. <laughs> it's all right. I'm not much of a gamer anymore. <laughs> but I, I did enjoy those Tony Hawk games and a lot of the extreme sports games. So If I ever LP Tony Hawk, I'll bring you along. All right, see you guys in Boardwalk, level four.